All right, so we're back here behind my pool and um, I've got a broken pool valve today and the problem is presenting as my hot tub um, return is not switching back from spa mode to normal pool mode, um, even though it clicks on the controller. And I've got these motorized valves that cost about $150 each. So if you have to replace them, it's pretty expensive. Um, but every time I've ever seen them break, which is like once every two years, um, it is this part right here, uh, which is the limit switch. And um, even though the whole thing costs $150, the limit switch costs about 80 cents. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that um, and save yourself quite a bit of money. All right, so I've reassembled the valve here really quick. This is the broken one. Um, a couple things that you should know about this. Uh, over here, there is a um, manual switch that's gonna allow it to um, go back and forth. Um, and that's what we're gonna use to do some testing. But you wanna note which way it is currently um, because this also controls the default um, position that your valve will go to when your pool turns on. So you wanna make sure you get it back in the same position afterwards. Um, so for me, uh, that is all the way down. But you'll see why uh, that's a problem in a second here. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna take this apart. So the first step is to take off this part so that we can get to the screws. This just screws off. None of this is gonna get, uh, gonna have any uh, chance of leaking. So you just kinda go for it. The leaking part is sealed down here, or the, the part that actually has water. Pop this off really quick. There's four screws. Again, don't take out the big screws here. Those ones are the ones that hold it on to the actual waterproof um, housing for the valve. I'm just gonna set these aside so I don't lose them. And then pop this top off real quick. Okay, so you can see down in here, let me pop this off of the uh, tripod really quick. So you can see down in here we got two parts. Zoom out. Okay, we got this part here, this is the limit switch for one side, and this is the limit switch for the other side. And um, this thing's really not that complicated. Essentially, um, this turning piece has a little nub on it, if it'll focus, uh, and that nub is going to actuate these these limit switches that are right here. And um, in my case, I think this is my bad limit switch, but we'll double check here. Okay, so how do we do this? How do we check it? Um, again, this over here, this is the um, manual switch. And so when I have it switched up, you can tell this thing isn't going anywhere and it should, but it's not going anywhere because this limit switch should allow it to move. This limit switch should be closed to allow it to move. So if I if I take this little jumper off for this little uh, connector and I just manually touch it like that, it'll allow the thing to move back to the other side. And so if I have it in the middle here, now we can move, now we can move. Nope, and I might have actually two bad limit switches. Let's see. So if we get it to the middle here, like that, you should be able to tell by flipping it up and down which direction is bad because it should only go around and it should stop when it gets to this side. So here you can see it's gonna push past that limit switch. So this switch is bad. And then it's not gonna go back to the other side. So the other switch is bad too. So we're gonna have to replace both switches. No big deal. Instead of costing us um, 80 cents, it's gonna cost us a cost us $1.60. All right, let's uh, get to doing that. And so here's what our replacement limit switches look like. They're pretty much identical. Um, the only thing you need to be aware of is that they are higher on one side than they are on the other side. And then also these ones have this little roller on the top. We're not gonna use that because they have their own little roller here. So we're just gonna take this and pull to the side and uh, they'll come right out like that. So that's the part that we actually need. I'll pick that up later. All right, so we'll take this one screw out here. 
and remove this limit switch. And I put it in the middle so the valve wouldn't move here. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to take my contacts and put them in the exact same spot. So we got, line it up like that, take this contact out, plug it into this spot, take this contact out and plug it into this spot. Okay. Then I got my little lever arm here that goes back into this position. It got knocked out. And then I'm just gonna push it down like that. And now that part's done. Put my screw back in the same spot. Like so. And replace the other one. One screw out. Get my new limit switch here. Take the metal part off. Pop the old limit switch out. Like that. You can see, I'm going to line it up the same. So we got this side over here, like that. Pop that end off. And this end off. Replace. And then double check our work. All right, see if we can get a good look at the actual mechanism here. So here are the, uh, the two limit switches on this side and on this side. And you can see that um, when these little nubs go around, this one pushes on this side and this one's gonna push on this side. And now that we've fixed our limit switches, see that when this one gets depressed it stops the valve from working and so that puts it into this position right where it's going back to the pool and then when it's going back to here well, that bottom one's going to actuate the lever there and now we're back to the hot tub return so um, in my case, the pool is the default, so my switch stays in the up position. So when the pool equipment turns off, um, it's going to default to coming back to this way if it doesn't get another message like uh, that it should turn the spot on. So yeah, we uh, saved about $150 here, or $148, um, by just replacing these two limit switches that had gone bad. Um, that doesn't mean that it's a poor quality part, it just means that they get used a lot. Um, in fact, uh, one of the things that it can mean is that it doesn't get used a lot. And so if these stay in one position for a long time, they'll go bad. And that's not a problem because we can just replace them without having to replace the whole unit because the unit is expensive. Hope that helped. See you later.